Hi guys, welcome back to the channel. As always, I do appreciate you stopping by. And today's video is this lovely Corvette wristwatch. And as you can see, the bezel is quite loose. I'll have to try and do something to tighten that up, see if we can. And again, the case is all scratched. But it does run and hands do set. Let's see if this date function works. Now I've been on the older uh, interweb and I really can't find out anything about Corvette watch brand. I presume it's something to do with the car. Oh, a little early, but the date does jump. Let's see what it's like on the old time grapher. See if we can get a reading out of it. Okay, it's running a little fast. Bit of beat error. So we'll give it a service, oil it up, and then see what we're left with. So, first things first, we're going to need to get the strap off. I like this strap. We'll probably put it back on afterwards. And then we can get the back open. You can see it's pretty scratched up. So again, we'll give that a bit of a clean. Let's see what we've got on the inside here. Before we do that though, we will have a little look. I always like to have a look at these, see if there's any markings. And there certainly are. No idea what they mean. Let's have a closer look at this movement. Automatic wind. Seems to be okay. There's no play in that. It's an ETA 2472. That comes winding stem, that's a bit rusty. So we'll try and clean that up later. As you can see again, the dial's seen better days, but adds to its character. So apart from running a bit of Rodico over it, there isn't a lot I'm gonna do. First things first, we'll get these hands out of the way. I like to put this little silicon disc I've got over the top. You see the second sun's taking it for a ride. That just protects the dial then while I use these hand removing levers, get under the hands and then lever up and then they'll just pop off the stem. Again, be careful because sometimes you can take the tube from the centre second. I've done that in the past. But we can keep the hands safe then in that little tub. And we can remove the dial. Now loosen off these dial feet screws. And once I remove the dial, I will tighten them back up for the cleaning machine. But we can then put that dial in the tub with the hands, keep it safe. And before we can remove the balance, we're going to need to take off this automatic winding works. That's just held on by two blued screws. They 
is the second. And then with them out of the way, we can lift off that automatic winding module. I'm just using my screwdriver just to lift it up. And come in with tweezers and remove it totally. So with the stem back in, we can look to remove the power from the main spring. Can you see that ratchet wheel there? That's on a pivot itself. Take the stem back out and then we can remove the balance. So can you see that little slot underneath the balance cock there? I'm just going to come in with a little screwdriver and lift it up. And that'll allow us to remove the balance if it wants to come out. There we go. And along with that is the center wheel. Sorry, the hour wheel from out the center. I'm just having a little look just to make sure it all looks okay and the spring is concentric. And that looks fine. So again, we'll put that somewhere safe. And then we'll turn over onto the dial side and look to take this date ring off. And that seems to be held on with two plates. This being the first one. Again, I do have a little look at the screws just so I know where they go back into after. Lift that plate off with a bit of rod coat, and as you can see there, the crown wheel has come away with it. So there's a right way and a wrong way for that one. Can you see it chamfered towards the bottom? Take out the minute wheel. This is the second plate. And underneath there, you can see the date jumper arm and the spring. So use a bit of Rodico. Oh, there we go. And that'll take it out for me. Now, all of the small springs like this, I generally tend to put in my version B dip for cleaning. I will use a bit of Rodico to take out the intermediate date wheel. Then we can take out that centre wheel there with the cannon pinion attached. That's a friction fit onto that centre wheel, which will then in date, sorry, in turn turn this date driving wheel and lever slide. And we can take this date wheel off. And again we can put that somewhere safe. That's in pretty good nick. And the date jump arm. And I've got to figure out. Oh, and there we go. But it didn't go far. So there's the spring and there's the, the wheel with the lever. No hindsight, I should have maybe have just lifted that lever up slightly, but hindsight's a wonderful thing. Instead, we're going to continue with dismantling it. Now moving on to the keyless works. Now comes the setting lever spring. And again, we'll come in with a bit of Rodico to remove the oak spring. And there we go, that 
that's out of the way. There you go. I don't put them into the cleaner machine. They go into a bit of virgin bee dip. I have uh, lost springs out of the baskets. Off comes the setting lever. And then winding pinion. And then the sliding clutch. And then we can turn back over onto the training wheel side. And we can take out the pallet fork. Starting with the pallet cock. Again, there's little slots under these so you can get a screwdriver in just to get a little bit of purchase. You want to be careful, you don't want to snap any pivots. But again, that looks okay under the microscope. Needs a bit of a clean. There's quite a bit of oil on there, but before I put it in my tub, I'll take that excess oil off with some Rodico. We can remove the pallet fork. So we can move on to the crown wheel. I'm just trying to figure Oh, be careful, Aid. Whether or not this is a left handed thread, and it is. Let's get a bit hesitant just in case I break it. Have a little look under the microscope. I don't always show this to you guys unless there's something interesting. But that bit's quite interesting, the way that's attached. It's free moving like that. So we'll remove the click. The click spring after that. Or it'll remove itself all at once. We can undo the ratchet wheel. That screws normal thread. Let's see if there's any play in the mainspring parallel. There isn't, that's good. Look to remove the barrel bridge. Oh, now where's that gone? There's that sliding post that was under that bridge. I'll take the bridge off and post has disappeared I wonder if it's gone out to space join all those click springs but we'll take out the mainspring barrel while we're waiting oh there it is so it had fallen into the movement what the crown wheel attaches to. But we're almost complete with the disassembly. It's just the trainer wheels. And the trainer wheels bridge is held on with two screws. And again there's a little slot or a recess so you can get a screwdriver in and lift it up. That will allow you to lift it away safely. And then we can remove your center wheel, your skate wheel, and then we can take out the third wheel. And then the intermediate wheel. Again, I'm just checking pivots. Just 
poke that screw through for the setting lever and then we can get the tweezers under it to remove it and then there's this cap jewel and then before it goes in for cleaning we'll peg out the jewel holes Give it a quick pre-cleaning some isopropyl and then it's off to the cleaning machine. Now what I do is I like to just gently rub the flat sides of the jewels. You often find that there is a bit of dried oil on there. Just by running a bit of pegwood over it, it'll clean it away. There's quite a bit on that particular jewel. Then we can turn it over and just run the pegwood through the holes. Give it a twiddle. And then we can clean the pivots on the wheels. Again, I do this with all of the wheels, but I don't show you. I'm going to show you this one just to see the difference from what it was beforehand to afterwards. So as you can see there, there's a bit of rust on it. And then that will remove that. That's ready for the cleaning machine. And again, for the cleaning machine, I'll reinstall the balance. But I will take out these cap jewels and again then I'll pop those into a jar of B-dip along with the springs. Now I do have two jars, one for the top jewel and then one for the bottom jewel. I have learnt it's not a good idea mixing them. that spring back up now and repeat the process for the underneath jewel like I say this will go into a separate jar and then we can remove the main spring these old pair of brass tweezers that's going to help me press down on the barrel which will allow the lid to pop and then we can remove the barrel arbor and then the main spring And then once that's out, we can go over to the cleaning machine. And again, it's at this point, I'd like to say thank you to everybody for leaving a comment. And everybody that does, I'll pop your name up here. So again, thank you. I don't have expensive cleaning fluids in these jars. That first one's only Napta. And then the second jar is a bit of distilled water with some cleaning solution in. And then the third jar is just plain distilled water. And then the black jar, that's where it goes to dry. Now while that's in there, let's have a look at these automatic works. I'll start by taking off the rotor. And it's very stiff, this screw. There we go, it's starting to move. And I'm going to clean all of this separately. Now the rotor is away. You can look at removing these wheels. Now this screw 
has got, as you can see, a flat side. So you need to turn it facing one of the wheels that will allow the wheel to come away. And then once that one's out the way, we can then turn that screw. Again, so the flat side's facing the other wheel. And then that'll allow that wheel to come away. And then the next thing we've got is this little sliding lock for better a phrase. We'll just slide that out of the way. And then that will allow us to remove these two wheels. And we can have a little check of them before they go in for cleaning. I'll get some nice propyl alcohol out. A little soft brush. Give all of those parts a clean. Now I've got to start being a little bit more careful with my tweezers sometimes, I think. And what you don't want to do is Start scratching everything by pinning it down. I kind of realise that and then put me tweezers through the centre jewel and I'll just keep it in place while I can then run the brush over it. And we can do the same sort of thing with a rotor, give that a little clean. And then all of the wheels and then onto a bit of tissue. Get them dry. We can go in with some ABS 9101. And then back in go the wheels. And with them in we can put this sliding lock back in position. Back over to the other side. So we're going to be in Mobius 9101. It's a slightly thicker viscosity oil. We can put that first wheel in, and then remembering we're going to have to turn that screw. Now that first wheel's locked in place. That allows us to put the second wheel into position. And then again, twist all of the way around. Just like that. And then they're both locked in position. And add a bit of oil onto the rotor. You can put the plate back in position then. And then screw that rotor back down. the rotor module complete. Everything runs freely. Just turn over make sure the wheels all are running. As you can see they are. So with the cleaning machine finished we can look to the cap jewels. We'll replace those before again removing the balance 
and continuing with the rest of the assembly. As you can see, there's quite a bit of dried on oil there. So I'm going to use a bit of pegwood, give it a rub. And then once I've got that dried up oil off there, I'll put it back into the bee dip. Give it another rinse. And then we can come in and oil it. Now this on these jewels is a, a thinner oil. And that's the Mobius 9010. With that little spot on there, we can come back in with a chaton and drop that on the top. And we can flip it over. Put it back into the movement. Now sometimes these springs can flick up and then they don't want to go back down. Now what that normally is, it's, it's shifted forward slightly in its seat. So if you come in with an oiler and just push the back of the spring there, try and reseat it. Which it can be a little bit fiddly. But eventually what will happen is it'll, it'll just fall down like that and then you can get it back into position and then it's the same process for the bottom jewel it's been cleaned now we'll oil it and can you see that I've never seen that before, but I presume it's doing that because the, the jewel isn't quite clean enough. So back into the bee dip, clean it up again, re-oil it, and this time the oil didn't spread. We can put the chaton back on. And then we can reinstall that into the movement. This one was playing ball straight away. As you can see that straight down. So let's take it off and continue with the rest of the movement. Now being an automatic, what you need to do is use a bit of braking grease. That's what this orange grease here is. And you put that on the side of the barrel and that will help the automatic spring slide round on the inside and give it a bit of friction but still allow it to move now confession time trying to hand wind that original spring back into the barrel I uh, knackered it up I really do need some mainspring winders but they're very expensive so if anybody comes across any cheap ones on eBay, please let me know. But I went ahead, got a new spring, and we'll pop that in. And we can get the arbor back in. And the lid on. Now they do come pre-greased, but I always like to add just a drop of oil. And again, we're going to oil up the arbor. I like to use a pin vise to put my arbors back in. I struggle with the tweezers. 
you sometimes I even struggle taking them out with tweezers. Get that closed down. Now I'm going to start with a set and lever screw. So I'm just oiling the hole where it goes. And I do this early on because otherwise I'll forget. And inevitably you end up having to strip the movement again just to put that screw back in. We can put the escape wheel in there. And we have this intermediate wheel to go back in. And then the third wheel. And then with that in place, we can put the center wheel in. Put a drop of oil on that stem. And with the wheels in, we can look to install the bridge. Which is moving the movement round to orientate it correctly. pegwood drop a little bit of pressure down onto the bridge not too much and we can then manipulate the wheels until they drop into the jewel holes sometimes you'll just find all of a sudden it'll be one that's holding everything back Inevitably, normally the escape wheel. Everything's free running. We can get the screws in. And once you've tightened down one screw, you can remove your peg wood and it should stay in place. And we can come in with the second bridge screw and get that tightened down. And once you've got things tightened down, just make sure everything still runs free. And then we'll add the main spring back in. Now I've just dropped a, a little bit of oil in there hold where the arbor will go and now I'm just going to drop a bit of oil on the underside of the barrel bridge and this is where that sliding post is going to go for the crown wheel and we're on the inside of that hole where it will slide around Now the oil should hold it in position. And we can put the crown wheel back on. A little bit more oil on the, the top of that where it will run round with the screw. And then comes the screw. Now remembering this is reverse threaded. So doing it up is the normal undo weight. And 
and then we can install that back into the movement and again before we put the ratchet wheel on we'll add a bit of oil onto the arbor and plate where we're, it will run And then with that one done up, we can look to put the screws in for the barrel bridge. And there's three of them on the barrel bridge. Two on the trainer wheels bridge. Done up, we can put the click spring back in. I mean, it's quite fiddly. That'll sit over that post, and then the actual click has got a little nub on the underside of it which needs to sit one side of the spring. So, what I do is I put the click past where it needs to sit, get a screw in, just like that, after I've dropped the screw everywhere, but get the screw in, start it off, just so the screw bites, and then what we can do is Pull the spring back, drop the click into position, and then do that screw up. Okay, so let's move on to the dial side. We're going to start with the setting lever there's a couple of ways of doing this the way I like to do it is I'll rest it into position put my finger over the top and then just turn it over and give it a couple of turns some people like to put some rodico there I tend to find if I do that it always moves And we can look to insert the clutch. Before we do that, we put a bit of the blue grease on it. And then we've got the winding pinion. And again, we'll add a bit of blue grease onto the ratchet teeth so this is what allows the stem to spin one way do nothing and then when you turn it the other way it'll wind the watch I just get a bit of grease on the plate there I'm just going to put a tiny speck of oil on the back of it where it will run against the plate. And we can drop it into position. Add a bit of oil on where the winding pinion will go. As I say, there's a right way and a wrong way. That chamfer needs to go down. I'm going to put 
put a bit of oil on this winding stem for the minute. I know it's still rusty, I'm going to look at that later. Bit of oil on the post where the winding, where the sort of the yoke is going to go. Wipe away the excess. We can put the yoke into position on that post that we've just oiled, and then the end of that goes into the slot on the clutch. And then now we're going to add a bit of oil just onto the elbow of this yoke where the spring will interact. And then come in with a really scary bit. And let's just hope this will stay in place. Because if not, it's going somewhere out of space. Joining the rest of the Swiss space program. There. And then the set and lever spring can go into position. Stand this screw up in its hole. There we go, and then we can get that tightened down. And then once that's tightened down, we can add a bit of grease onto the what I like to call the lobster claw. We can pull the winding stem in and out a couple of times to work that through. And then we can go over the top with a bit of Rodico afterwards, clean it up. Before we go any further, we have this other capsule we need to put back in. That's the screw for it. And there's the actual jewel so it's going to get the same treatment give it a bit of rub with some pegwood and then back into the bee dip and give it a rinse as you can see all of that dried on oil there look So a bit of pegwood works great. Gets rid of that dried on oil, does no damage. And then we can put it back into the bee dip. And then a tiny drop of oil in the centre. And then we can get that installed back onto the main plate. And then we can get the screw in, get that tightened down. Then again, come in and all some of these posts for the date. So that's that big spring that we 
lost. Okay, now I, I didn't see how this came out because it all jumped out all at once, but it's pretty self-explanatory. As you can see, there's a, a bit of a, a kick out on the end of that spring and that goes in that recess. And then the longer bit goes up and engages with that lever. spring slightly out of the way and then get this on the post and then you can see that just engage and then there's that jaw there I'm just going to Add a bit of oil to that and then also on that post for this intermediate date wheel as you can see there there's a recess where it will sit and then this is the date jumper arm just popped a bit of oil on the post for that bit of rodico over the date wheel take any surface dirt off that's all I'm going to do now what we do need to do is re-engage the date jumper wheel so if you remember when we took it out, there was those two recesses on that wheel. So I'm just getting it roughly in position. And then we can turn that wheel so they line up. And then the day wheel will sit underneath that wheel then. Now we need to put the spring in for the date jumper lever. And again, this is another one that has the potential to join the Swiss base program. But not today. We can come back in with this retaining plate. Get that screwed down. And once once that one is securely in place, that date ring won't go anywhere. But for good measure is that second plate to reinstall. But before we do that, we've still got a few more wheels to go. So we've got that cannon pinion the transfer wheel that's friction fitted and then we can put the minute wheel in place and then that retaining plate Again, I'm just making sure I've got it lined up in the right position and then we can get it screwed into place Again, when putting that plate on, you've got to be careful. It has a tendency to sit under the teeth. So you have to be a little bit careful just to make sure it stays 
in position on the top of them. And once you've got it securely in place, you can tighten those screws down. And then we can flip it over. And we can get the pallet fork in. Give it a bit of a wind. And before installing the balance, we will oil pallet fork jewels. And just making sure it's seated correctly. Now we can get the screw in there, get that tightened up. And then like I said, we can give it a wind up, put some power in, and then that pallet fork is flicking over as it should. So we'll, like I say, give it some oil. Now this part's really hard and tricky. So that is probably just slightly too much, but it will work its way through and spread out over all of the other teeth. And then we can come in with a balance and hopefully it starts back up. And there we go, it wants to. And let's get that screw in. And that'll make that plate sit level. Just like so. And then usually when it's like that, it will pick up a little bit more speed. And we can come in and oil all of these jewels. I'm not gonna show the whole of the oiling process, but it's the same for the other side. You know, on the other side, there was one or two jewels we oiled as we went because they got covered over. But up on the top, this is easy to see and continuous so with that done I did leave it for 24 hours and then this is the next day and we can see what's happened and that's just from a service that's no alterations you're looking between zero seconds minus two just then 0 0.1 millisecond B error. There we go, it's gone up to minus five. That's still totally acceptable. Let's continue putting the watch together. So next is to get the dial on. And before we do that, we'll just give it a quick clean with some Rodico. And then we can loosen up the dial feet screws and when I take the dial off I just loosen them off take the dial away and then tighten them back up for cleaning and those loosened we can put the hour wheel on and on goes the dial we can tighten those screws up Now there's no dial washer on this watch. It's all incorporated onto the hour wheel. Now 
I need to just do the date so we know where midnight is. There we go. And now we can get the hands on. Now I have given the hands a little clean. I've got a like a little pen with a felt pad on the end. Now you can get the same thing from version and they're about 20 quid. Or you can get exactly the same one from eBay for about three quid. Uh, there it is there. And they're just camera lens pens. One end's got a brush and the other end has got this felt pad. And it is just the same as the, the version ones. Now again, not knowing anything about this watch, the Corvette brand. If anybody does, please leave a comment. Let me know. Be interested to know if they are related to the car brand. Or if they've got anything to do with the Corvette car. Just make sure the hands don't foul on each other. Yeah, flipped over it, just coming up to 5.2, it's good enough. Then on goes the second hand, and just give that a, a little gentle press, doesn't need a lot of pressure. Again, we just double check that the hands don't foul against each other now the second hands on so it's time for the case and we need to have a look at this bezel now this bezel spring is quite rusty so I'm just going to get a nylon brush on it give it a clean up Now, there's no clicking on this bezel. I have a feeling that there may at one point have been, but that's now worn down over the years. So my main aim is just to try and stop it being as loose. To do that, I've kind of just pulled that spring open a little bit. See if that uh, helps. But before we put that on, we need to put the crystal in. And before we can do that, it's going to need a clean. So what we've got here is a bit of poly watch. And I'll spend half hour, 40 minutes or so getting out the scratches. As you can see, that looks good now. We can get the bezel pressed on. And then once all that is together, we can get the movement into the case. Now there's this brass ring that I'll also need to go in. I just like to get the winding stem in place first. And then that brass ring. There's a little lug on the other side. And that just needs a little gentle press down. And then we can do up the screw for the winding stem. A bit of a tip for you on this when you put your crown in you do the screw up 
sometimes you think it's uptight, just pull the crown out, push it back in, and double check. Because there's another half a turn on that seat. And all that's happening is you're, you're seating the little lug inside the stem properly. Okay, now it's set. A new gasket. I have put some silicon grease on this. I do need to get myself one of them greasing tubs. The little sponges in. At the minute I just put a bit on my fingers and run it round. It gets quite messy. But with that on we get the back done up. This is never going to be waterproof. I'd never even put it near water. But I use that ball to do it up hand tight, and then I'll give it a tiny little turn with the case opener just to cinch it down. But I am going to reuse the straps that came with it, as you can see there on. That bezel seems a little tighter. I don't think that's turned out too bad. And let's see it out in the wild. There we go. Thank you, folks. If you've enjoyed that, hit the like and subscribe. And I'll see you on the next one.